Hey everybody, uh, it's Dr. Rick dropping in once again. Oh uh, man, this thing is getting hot and fired up. Uh, this whole thing on individualism. Whoever thought that a conversation on individualism would get people up in the uproar, but it goes to show just how effective the programming has been. Uh, I was once quoted, matter of fact, Dr. Michael Blanchard has this quote uh, attributed to me in his book, uh, Black Lim Black Limitations. You know, look it up. It's in. It's definitely on Amazon um, and a number of other different places. But definitely look it up. The book, Black Book of Limitations. Some of the most powerful excerpts and quotes from some of the most remarkable mind, black minds uh, throughout history. Look. One of the things that I was quoted and saying in there, he's got a few of me in there, but one I was quoted as saying was, facts mean absolutely nothing to the conditioned mind. And it's absolutely 100% unequivocally true. Uh, the conditioned mind is the inundated subconscious with a particular train of thought and thinking that makes your behavior, your decision-making, your outcomes predictable. And it's done uh, in a number of different ways, but predominantly through some form of propaganda, the use of the media. Um, and I've written on this, I've talked about this, but um, we, we are smarter than the science. We know how to get around it. We'll make it work when it's never ever worked in the history of mankind. We'll figure out a way to make it work. And we, you know, that's what we do. Well, I talked about a bunch of different things over the last week or so associated with individualism that does not pan out well for us or bode well for us over time. One of those things happened to be You know this new thing with men wearing pearls and it seems something it seems like something so innocuous innocuous right it's whatever you want to wear wear it well that's not how the brain works and i'm not going to go into the details of explaining that but what i am going to do right now is i'm going to call my sisters to the slab and i'm going to tell you why and I think I've earned the right to do so. For over the past 20 years, nobody has championed or advocacy, advocated for black women from the position of a black male as much as I have. I have done it to the point where I was called a simp. But the, the brothers were turning on me and everything else. But I, the number one principle in Black Man Lead, my rite of passage program for young black males, the number one principle is a black man never brings or causes harm to a black woman. That does not mean a black man does not speak truth or a black man does not call a spade a spade, but he does it in a respectful way. He does it in a way that brings illumination and light to the ones who are willing to receive it. Some people don't want the truth. Some people want to be validated in that mess. Some people want to be... Uh, affirmed in their BS and they're not trying to hear it and they're going to attack anything that uh, caused them to the mat. Well, here's here's a, here's the problem I have with the whole thing. Anybody that's followed me for any time knows I have no problem with people having dissenting opinions to mine. I don't claim to know it all and even on the things I'm 100% certain on, I understand people have opinions. How you deliver your opinion is extremely important because I'm about respect. It's, I'm a man so it comes naturally but I'm really big on respect. There's a way to do everything and that's one of the things in the biggest issues I took uh, when uh, there was a difference with, with Kevin Samuels and I is not some of the things he was saying as much as the way he was saying it, knowing that he had the intelligence and the ability to articulate it in a way that was less abrasive and abusive. But again, it gets you clicks. It definitely gets the black men riled up that, that are right now at odds with black women totally blows my mind that we fall for the okie doke with that one uh but anyway it is what it is but here 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 we are let me tell you something i want my sisters to listen to this and i want you to listen real carefully you can't keep complaining about the failure of men and then when men 
who are proven to be lovers of their families, lovers of their women, responsible in their behavior and doing everything they can within the idea of their humanity, meaning that we aren't perfect, we make mistakes, but we are consistently striving towards being a best, the best representation of black manhood as we possibly can. And when we call BS by other men on deck, we don't need you interfering. We don't need your opinions. Let me tell you something. You know what, you know, and the whole thing is the idea that we ought to be able to do what we want to do. We love that freedom of thought, that liberative, liberating thought. The problem is some things were designed to perfect. Some things was, some, some the th the, the creation was the way it was supposed to be. We thwarted it. However you want to look at it, whatever religion, religious eyes you want to see it through, spiritual eyes you want to see it through, there's a force at play that holds these things together. There are too many variables for it to be happens chance, happenstance or chance. There's order in the universe, and where there's order, there's something keeping that thing in order. The problem is some things were created to be a certain way, and you can't improve on. You can't improve upon perfection. But trying to think you can outthink the grand designer on what it should be like and why it works a certain way and how it works a certain way uh, normally ends up like what we've gotten over thousands of years is a decline in society, the fall of, of empires, uh, the literal uh, destruction of entire uh Sub, uh, sub demos of human human beings no longer exist because they thought they could outthink the social construct. The idea of being accountable to one another in the way that we behave, knowing that our behavior isn't just affecting us, it's affecting everything around us. We don't the idea that you don't owe anybody anything and you can do what you want to do, this whole thing that sounds cool when you say it, it's not my business, as long as it don't bother me, do what you want. The problem is, if I do something, uh, and I used this example the other day, if I sit up and I don't hold my son accountable and every time he does something at school, I go up to school and I defend him and I'm ready to fight the teachers and I'm, you know, don't bother him, you know, you know, don't tell him what to do. And he goes through school and he's never held accountable. And he goes out and he killed, he, he, he runs into your daughter and decides he's gonna date your daughter. Or he runs into your son in a situation and he kills either one of them in any situation. My failure to honor my response, my social responsibility to properly and effectively raise my child with standards and an understanding of what's expected of him as a man ended up hurting you. Now, it didn't just hurt you. Your son's gone or your daughter's gone. All your family members are hurt. All the people they know outside of your house are hurt. And this kid's going to end up going to prison where he's going to go in there and there's going to be an entire new eco cycle of failure that happens because I failed at one damn thing. And so when we're trying to correct it, because we can see it literally when you're the closer you get to functioning in your natural space as a man or female, male or female, you have this innate ability to sense when something doesn't fit. Even if you don't know why it doesn't fit, why you should do something, why you shouldn't do something. That's why when men see stuff and they go, oh, hell no, you know, that's a violation of the man code. There's just something that we know and we feel that we operate in. Messing with that and trying to make it free flowing and everybody can get in and fit in. And somebody used the term of inclusive and, and, and all these other there are just certain things that aren't supposed to be included. Every, every, the more inclusive you become, the more diluted you become. You gotta understand that the more you let things in that wasn't initially in, the further you get away from the original. The further you get away from the original, the more thwarted, distorted, and disrupted you are in trying to fulfill that thing which you're supposed to be fulfilling. So again, I, I, I wanna make this as clear as I possibly can. There are times, ladies, 
when we're doing what we need to do and if we're calling out something that another man is doing and we're calling it out from the position of our manhood stand down that is not your time you might know how you want a man to treat you you might not you might know what characteristics you want to look for in a man but guess what you're not a man so you can't teach it because you can't see it from where it's happening you can know what the, you want the outcome to be, but you don't know how to get it there. You might think you do, but what I'm telling, and then the crazy thing is the vast majority of women that's co-signing this bull crap won't even date a guy that's doing it. I mean, it's, it's, it's really, really amazing what we do and how we do it. And I'm just at a point now where I have to, you know, I have to speak out on that. There are some things you don't, there are conversations, ladies, you don't belong in. And we've got to get back to the point of understanding there are lines we don't cross. We have to get to a point where we are really to sit up and say, you know what, that's not something I'm willing to do or I'm supposed to be involved. In. I'm going to let y'all handle that. There are times that mothers, no matter how much their maternal instincts kick in and they're sitting up and they're going, oh, my baby, my baby. There are times they have to step back and let dad handle that because it's something that a man needs to do with another, with, with a male that he's trying to influence. And you don't have to understand it. You don't have to agree with it. You are not a male. There are certain things I can't interfere with when a mother of my child is sitting up trying to teach that child, my, my, one of my female childs, trying to teach that child how to be uh, a woman. You know, I know I want her to be respectful. I want to know that. But that's a thing about the intimacy of her femininity. Uh, with herself first and with her mom that needs to be developed. There are some things that are outside the boundaries of that femininity that mom can teach her that I can sit up and know I don't like but can't really truly communicate and it's not going to come the same because the energy that is coming from is coming from my masculinity. She needs to connect with the feminine energy of her mom to have an understanding. The same way we're working with these men. We know what we're doing. We may not be perfect at it but there's a way that it's been done through history there's a way that it initially started and the further we move away from it the more we sit up and say whatever goes goes the more diluted we become inclusivity is not a part of excellence at all you can't just let anybody in your group and think your group is going to achieve excellence you have to have standards standards of performance standards of behavior standards of what you just will not do all these things these codes of conduct have to be met they have to be uh accounted for the whole idea you know and then i heard terms look like bullying we are bullying them into doing i mean we are so softening the hell out of our men and then wonder why they act like women when they get out there and you're dealing with them you can't have it both ways. You can't sit up and say you want a man to be a man, but you're constantly co-signing bull crap that strips him of his masculinity and gives him a full-fledged pass to walk off into a feminine side that was only reserved for his family. His feminine side is for him to come home from being in the war, from coming home, from going out there and doing battle, hang his sword on the wall as he walks in the door and be able to embrace his wife woman with love, care, and kindness and cover and deal with his children with softness and, 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 and pure love. And, and, and that's what that feminine decide is for. It's to be able to embrace the things that need to be embraced softly. It is not for him to be out walking up and down the street doing things that are customarily associated with women because there is a neurological and a neurobiological impact on that that will in fact affect their behavior and what gives gets me is none of the people that are commenting on it have put any true study work into it nobody has an area of expertise in social sociology much less psychology much less um socioeconomics and all the other things that you should be aware of and how these things flow and operate and influence in those areas but they'll do it and then when you mention some of the things that they should be looking at then they they go on the attack and the assault it's amazing 
you know, we will defend ignorance with a veracity that if we were to defend learning and growing and developing and protecting values, protecting a standard, if we were looking at and with the same veracity going after the things that were harming us and building the things that will elevate us, we would become unstoppable. I've been writing on that too. But what, what happens? Nah. This dude talking that BS, man. Let them babies wear them pearls. Man, that's a fashion statement. And then they bring, what about Prince? Prince is a unicorn. And I am a huge Prince fan. From before I hit my teenage years, my mom was a recording artist. My brother is a recording artist and a drummer. My nephew is a drummer. Uh on a high level. I grew up around music. I've been in the studio with John P. Key. I've been in the studio with Fred Hammond. I've been in the studio with a bunch of other people. But what I'll tell, and so I've seen all that. Man, I grew up with the eight track takes just popping in stuff. I discovered Prince on the 45 in my mama's collection. And I'm like, who is this guy? Then I come to understand him. And But never in my life did my masculinity say that's the way I need to dress. Now I recognize that player right there, dressed just how he dressed, to come take my girl. He was that dude. That's not going to be the case for the average guy or pretty much any other guy. Maybe I heard somebody mention Len Lenny Kravitz. Uh, I don't, you know, I, I'm not a woman, so I don't know how y'all guys feel about Lenny. But Lenny's cool. But I'm not walking around dressed like Lenny. There's some things in me, and if you talk to the average guy who's out here doing the stuff that needs to be done he ain't doing it either and those are the guys that are setting the example for our boys and if we feel that it's going to be a negative impact women stand down stand down this whole idea of liberation you don't realize what got you because you're not tracing the claws you'll complain about the outcome and never go back and trace and see where it started it started with this whole idea that we can do anything we freaking want We are going to have to really truly stop and actually start asking ourselves, are we really truly ready to make the sacrifices that are required of us to go out and do the things that are absolutely necessary to accomplish what we say we want? See, we, we want it, but we don't want to give up stuff. We want it, but we don't want to be held accountable. We want it, but we don't want the responsibility that comes with it. On that note... Look, I'm going to get out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day. Look, if you believe in the work that we have done in the uh, community, the black community over the last 30 years, uh, from our research center to our program and development department, uh, to Black Man Lead, to Restoring Debt Ghetto, so got Daughters, to Music is Life, and of uh, the advocacy for mental health, the advocacy for domestic violence and addiction and all these things that we have championed for years. Look in the description box. Look at how you can give and support what we do. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day. I'm out.